This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation. I don't even know where I want to begin with this. I'll tell it. Let's just be open with it. Yeah, it's really so, personal. Like it's very personal. Yeah. Can I be as personal as it was? <laughs> I don't know. I, so last well, night, I think we have to be yeah, because yeah. it only serves us. I mean, we're literally starting. It only serves a. Us. It only. <laughs> I this just, guys, this conversation is is for us, no, not for you. I mean, <laughs> gonna... no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. You're listening to the Laughing Couple podcast with your hosts Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Join them weekly as they discuss topics such as relationships, kids, sex, parenting, all unfiltered and all with a healthy dose of laughter. Please welcome your hosts, Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Five. And what was the other? Five Alive. Five Goes West. Five Goes West. You don't know Five Goes West? No, he like but jumps off the, a tree. But I've heard the rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling get your, your titties rolling. I don't even rolling. know what it was. Did you oh say get God. your titties rolling? That's, I think that's how I know the song. I can promise you that that's not how the movie goes. Not from the... I've never seen the Disney movie. So he that, like falls off a train and then and then goes explores the world. It's basically like a coming of your own, like exploring and getting older and like figuring out how to leave. But he's still a child. I'm going to watch it again. He's a child mouse? Yes. He's a child. Five goes west. He's like, I want to see the world. So then he leaves and then he experiences all these like crazy things. I'm. Why was he on the train to begin with? I think he lived there. It's been a while. He lived on the train with a family of humans. No, I think he, they just lived like separately. It doesn't matter. I have to watch this movie. I'm going to take a gummy and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds you're like just gonna Stuart, come home and i'm just gonna be like it sounds like a Stuart little <laughs> it kind of is i think but it's There's full a, cartoon but you know what's crazy is that there are some movies out there that like when you think of them it just reminds me of my childhood like that movie for me i can fully remember watching it i don't remember the entire movie but i remember watching the movie with my parents and my brother being like wow this is so good probably you know a movie that always reminds me of being a child and i could watch it tomorrow and be a child the again. cinderella story with hillary <laughs> People don't forget. Yeah. People don't forget. No? Okay. No, which, it's, which called, movie? it's a movie called The Little Giants. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Little football? Giants. The football movie, yeah. yeah. With Al or Bundy. Sandlot. Yeah, the Sandlot. Sandlot's so brilliant as well. But it's like, uh, it's the one scene and it always, it's the first movie I ever cried in. Mm. Believe it or not, it's the very first movie I ever cried in. I got a really cool connection with my dad and so everything that's father related always makes me think of my dad. And uh, this dad was uh, a hard worker, is always away from work. And the one kid, uh, that's the whole storyline, is always like, dad, come play with me. And his dad's like, I got to go to work. And he's leaving. And uh, at the end of the game, he becomes the running back. And, the, pl and the, the, the play call was pitch to Johnny. And he sits there and he's like, pitch to Johnny. You can't pitch to Johnny. I'm Johnny. And then the ball snapped he pitches it to johnny and johnny holds the ball and he says what do i do and then uh the main quarterback junior who was played by devin sawa yes. says to him just run to him and he looks up and he sees his dad oh i'm getting emotional right now about it that's this is a great movie Aww. this is why i cried his dad comes running out of the cab with his briefcase to watch the game and he's in the end zone and his dad and he says dad and he just fucking darts through every player trying to tackle him and runs right to the end zone drops the football and hugs his dad Aww. i'm like i'm like six or seven when i watch this movie and i'm like holy shit i wasn't yeah. prepared for yeah, this why am i crying oh let's change the subject <laughs> that's nice that's yeah. sweet. pitch to johnny you can't pitch to johnny i'm johnny yeah anyways wow that was i wasn't prepared for this in the beginning of the podcast i thought this was supposed to be a funny episode Nope, okay. it's all about crying. All right, let's get into let's it. Let's get into it, shall we? Shall we go for it? Oh, I just fucking smoked myself in the face with the mic. This new setup, I got to figure out. Oh, God. Oh. All right, let's So last week, last week we talked about uh, never been kit. Oh. I just did the same thing. <laughs> I did the same thing, <laughs> and it made, funny. it made a noise that sounded like, like my elbow was broken. Okay. Right, Jake? I was dead. I died. My last arm, week. My, well, my arm broke. Last week. <laughs> last week we talked about never been kissed and how there was some problematic concept and context in the movie so i was like oh what other movies haven't aged well went to reddit reddit has pulled through there was a couple of them that i didn't even realize okay so one of them um 
is, and I don't remember this movie or this scene, but everyone's talking about how fucked up Big was with Tom Hanks. Because it's a 12-year-old or a young kid who is in an adult body and then basically talks about getting laid. He starts making out with his wife, lifts up her bra and like touches her boob. Not his wife, the, a co-worker. I don't, I don't remember yeah, she's it. she's a co-worker. But like also, that's so <laughs> inappropriate. How old is he? Like how old is the kid supposed to be? Yeah, he's like a 12-year-old kid. Is it 12 though? He's a, he's a kid. He's a kid kid. He it's kind of weird. He goes to Zoltan, the, okay, tel- yes. the thing, and and wishes to be big, and then becomes big, and he's got money. And a... you know what's really <laughs> hilarious? I don't know what his job was, but the house that he lived in, the suite that he lived in, was unbelievable. Yeah, I remember it being like a crazy nice apartment, like a big apartment, huge in like apartment New York or something. It's like that movie Richie Rich, not Richie Rich, uh, the one Blank Check, where the where the kid Spike gets hit. That, after that's, the guy. They said that's not the one people were talking about. Blank, it's check. blank check, and there's apparently a, a scene in it that didn't need to happen about um, kissing at the end. Because he falls in love with like an FBI agent or something. Blank yeah. check? Yes. Blank check, he was a kid. Yes. The whole time. He was never not a kid. I know, but apparently there was like a questionable relationship because his love interest is like a full grown FBI Woman. agent. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't remember that movie enough. Anyways. But um, yeah. And then the other one people were talking about is American Pie. Like, don't trash American Pie. It is gold. I love American Pie. But it is funny how. Homemade today, or McDonald's? Today, my favorite, one of my favorite lines of all time. Today, movies, you could not get away with that shit today. Because what we, was it about American Pie that was so offside? Well, this one is, I understand what they're saying. They literally blast and broadcast a girl changing and masturbating all over the internet for the whole school to see. Oh, yeah. Like that's. I don't know why I thought that was not inappropriate when I watched yeah, it. Yeah, and then, and then they victim blame her. They get fucking mad at her. They do? Yeah. Yeah, they're like, Ew. and then it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> Blink one eighty two makes a cameo in that. She's the one that gets in trouble for with being broad for being broadcast without her consent, and she's the one that gets shit for it. Oh, I it's don't really know. fucked up. And no wonder why we have these like weird like conditions and like sexual shame and shit because this is the stuff that we grew up on, and we're like, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't question that when I watched it. Neither did you. You know. Um, not that this podcast is supposed to be like this, but you're starting to see with the P. Diddy stuff. Yeah. The Epstein stuff before P. Diddy. Now the P. Diddy stuff. You got the R. Kelly stuff that had all happened before. And then you've got the Me Too movement with uh, <laughs> Harvey Wine. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, For those yes, of you watching, the bad there goes... Mike uh, just left me. <laughs> live. <laughs> Uh, anyways, you got this Har- Harvey Weinstein stuff, and now you've got this Nickelodeon. Oh, what are you doing, Brittany? <laughs> and now you've got this Nickelodeon stuff that's all coming out right now. Are we pausing? No, we're not. We're not. I'm fine. Is this live? It's because of my fucking knees. My giraffe legs are just too high, and it keeps hitting the mic, guys. Guys, <laughs> come back. Come back. Come back. Jack. Jack. Back. It's fine. Everything is fine. This is some behind the scenes what stuff. What a great, what a great movie Titanic was. Speaking of, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, Jake, here, here I come to save the day. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Mighty Mouse is on his yeah. way. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's good. Okay, hold it there. I will. Tape. Nothing like tape. This podcast was not sponsored by Road. <laughs> Road to mics. Uh, anyways, you're now seeing this Nickelodeon stuff coming out, and all of these child actors are talking about how inappropriate the their their coaches were, their oh, yeah. their sure. producers were. Um, it's it's scary to think mm-hmm. that we watched these children grow up, mm-hmm. and then you want to talk about gaslighting. Look at Corey Feldman as an example. Corey Feldman and Corey Hart. These are two individuals that we, I I hate to admit this, we make fun of today because of how weird they are. Who? Corey Feldman and Corey Hart. I don't know who they had. uh, Corey and Corey or Hart and Hart, that TV show. Corey Feldman was, uh, he's in the Goonies. He was a child actor. He was a huge child actor in the 80s. What's the the show he's in right now? What do you mean? He's not. He's got his own uh, band that he plays. I don't know idea who these people are. 
Corey Hart and Corey, Corey Hart killed himself. Oh, I don't know. But don't you start know. looking a lot. A lot of these uh, childhood actors yeah. killed themselves. Like Jonathan Brandis killed himself. You look at Joaquin Phoenix's brother, or was Joaqu- oh yeah yeah yeah. Like all of these kids, these kids were alcoholics. They were yeah. drug addicts. Drew Barrymore talks about being thirteen yes. at Club Fifty One. Yeah, offering Is like it Club they're 51, offering Club Twenty One drinks. Drugs. In New York, whatever it is, the famous one. Yeah. They had access to drugs. They had access to booze. Mm-hmm. We talked about Nickelodeon and um, uh, uh, Victorious as an example. And the guy that was Canadian, oh, yeah, the yeah. main guy Always that was Canadian, drunk. talked about he. there's a whole season. He doesn't even remember acting in it yeah, because he was hammered. So hammered. They used to give him ju- like juice boxes full of alcohol. Mm-hmm. And you start thinking about these. These are young, impressionable children that you feel on a Hollywood set are safe. They are like... As kids, we watch these kids grow up, not realizing that they're all, not all of them. I'm not blanking it. I'm sure there were a lot of great people out there in Hollywood, but a significant amount of them were being abused mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually. And it's like, what? And now it's all coming out. And it's like, you watch these movies from the eighties and the nineties and the early two thousands. And you think, how did we let that get away? Mm -hmm. How did we let that stuff get away? Another one that the movies that I was that I was looking up is 40 days and 40 nights with Josh Hartnett where he um where he masturbates that where the girl comes from a feather what great scene no I, I don't I don't remember that where he, he decides not to have sex for 40 yes, days yes so but the problematic part of this movie is that his ex-girlfriend comes in handcuffs him rapes him and then the girl gets mad at him because mm-hmm. it's like oh you should have like what do you mean but that wasn't considered rape. Because it was a girl. Right. It's bizarre. It was a girl. Anyways. That, I forgot about yeah. that scene. Yeah. You know what? You're going to go watch that? I'm not going to watch it. I'm, <laughs> I like Josh Hartnick. I thought he was great in yeah. uh, Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah. He was in Oppenheimer. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. If I'm going to watch a... Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if it's I'm going to watch a... a if I'm going to watch a Josh Hartnick movie, it's going to be Pearl who? Harbor. Who? Josh Hartnett. Hartnett. <laughs> What's his name? Hartnett? Hartnett? Hartnick. Hartnett. <laughs> what is his name, Brittany? Stop laughing at me. Just tell me what Josh the... Hartnett. Hartnett. Yes. It's going like, to be Pearl Harbor. Hartnett. Pearl Harbor is one of the greatest yeah, really Josh movie. Hartnett movies of all time. Why are you saying it like that? Hartnett. Uh, I was, because I listened to the Drama Queens podcast with um, like Sophia Bush, all the girls from One Tree Hill. Mm. Oh my God. What a great show that was, it by the way. First season, at least. Absolutely terrifying how much they went through from the producer. And like um, Hillary Brenton, who plays Peyton, was constantly, name, by the way. constantly sexually harassed by the producer. And she's like, you know, everyone around me, not that I expected them to say anything because people were every, every, all their jobs were so fragile. Like if you said anything, you're fired. Like he's the producer or the director, one of the two. But like people knew that this was happening at one at one point he i guess grabbed her inappropriately at like a party somewhere and then chad michael murray was the only one that was like what the fuck are you doing this actually and, sounds like an episode of their show right right hillary was like because she did she not almost get raped and sophia bush came in yeah this is like first season episode three yes, or four yes and so he uh really he said like something show. because Dawson's she Creek and one tree Hill. she um he said that he was the only one that didn't have anything to lose because the producer already hated him, but he was secure enough in his role. Like they couldn't get rid of Chad Michael Murray. So he was the only one that was able to like, yeah. Anyways, it went on for years. And then when the me too movement had come out, she was like, it was bizarre because a lot of the staff didn't know how to act around me. They didn't know if it was like to acknowledge that like, Hey, we knew we're really sorry that that happened. Or like I didn't, they didn't know how to approach her and talk to her about it. Cause they all felt, of like a certain sense of guilt for knowing that this was happening and not stopping it. And it just was accepted. And she's like, you know what else is really fucked up is that my, I would tell my family members and my friends and they would be like, man, like you're such a trooper. Like you're really pulling through. Like I know it must be hard. Like you're, you're, you're so strong for this. Yeah. Cause the, she was their gravy train. Like what the fuck? Like what do That's you mean I'm so strong? How That's about coming problem. in and being like uh, unacceptable? You know what's really sad is so you don't know who Corey Feldman is. No. But just look him up. Anybody who's listening to this, just look it up. He sat down on the View with Barbara Walters and all of the other girls at the time, early stages View, 
And he talked about pedophilia in Hollywood Mm. before it became known that pedophilia existed in Hollywood. And he was gaslighted by Barbara Walters. She said, you're going to tear down this entire industry. People are going to lose their jobs because of what you're saying. Really? And he says, I'm sorry, but it's true and it's happening. And it happened to me. And so there was a TV show called Corey and Corey or Heart and Heart or something like that. And Corey Hart, who was also a childhood star at the same time as Corey Feldman, he he killed himself as a result of it, became an alcoholic, um, drug abuser, and he killed himself because of this trauma. And they talked about it openly, that mm. they were abused. And they were not like, I'm not suggesting that they were being laughed at, but they certainly weren't being taken serious when mm-hmm. it comes to this. And now it's all kind of, it's coming out that this is real and this really, this actually happened and it happened super frequently. Mm. I know somebody, I'm not going to use their name and you know, the Vince McMahon WWE stuff is now all coming out. I know somebody who was literally at the precipice of, I can be launched into stardom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. I can be launched into stardom. So and they flew her down to New York and they had this they had dinner, nice, all the stuff. She was on like a show. She was. She was on like a, a, a mini show reality TV thing, yeah. show. This was like a test to see if yeah. she could, if the, if crowds liked her or if the audience liked her and they did and it was successful. And so they brought her to New York. They had this fancy dinner with her. And at the very end of this, this guy, I'm not going to mention his name either. Um, he said to her, okay. Do you, know who the na- do you know who the name is? I know his name is, yeah. I'd fucking blast him. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. And I don't know if this was the nickname they gave him or if this was his actual name. It doesn't really matter. I'd blast him. But he said, uh, he said to her, he's like, okay, so here's the thing. After tonight, you're going to be famous. You are going to be super famous and we're going to make you super famous. He said, but tonight, you're mine. So fucked up. He says, because everybody, and I'm going to use some foul language that here. That is so fucked up. He said, up. everybody is up. going to want to fuck you once they know who you are. But I want to know that I was the first to do it. <sighs> and so she was like, well, I'm not, I'm not really interested in that. He said, okay, well, I'm going to tell it to you this way. Tomorrow you're famous or tomorrow you're not famous. Yeah, Choose. tomorrow you're, you're, and then she, he said her regular yeah. name. Like, who do you want to be? He's like, yeah, like, essentially, like, you're famous tomorrow mm-hmm. or nobody knows you tomorrow. Choose. And she stayed in her hotel room nobody and nobody knows, who, knows who she is. Yeah, but she's, she can live with herself. This, this girl, if she would have been her five years later mm-hmm. with Instagram and 10 years later with TikTok, she'd be uber famous because she'd be uber famous. That's yeah. the that's the kind of volume that she was starting to produce in the world of social media before social media was ready for that kind I of world. I also think that like it would have destroyed her mental health. Like I don't know if she would be able to be in that space. It destroyed her mental health. Like to I'm begin so glad with. that she didn't say like she had the she had enough knowledge and enough love for herself to say like I'm fucking better than this, especially because this happened a while ago. It did. Like it this was, was like 2000 and three or that, four that is something that i think would have been like hard for any woman because it was just so normal back then to be like no i'm gonna i'm gonna say no mm-hmm. because then you're gas you, they're gaslighting you you're going right you're, 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 you're done there are so many people that oh, want to be famous so that it's up. like yes you're beautiful yes you're talented yes you you could be a megastar but so too can so many other people if we put them in that position. Right, right. And that's what these Harvey Weinsteins of the world say is like, you don't want to have sex with me? No problem. I can open up that door and there's 20 other people that will. Mm -hmm. You can be famous. All you have to do is this. And there was a, when the Me Too movement first came out, I cannot remember for the life of me what the actress was. She came out and it was a Harvey Weinstein victim and she flat out said, I was given the option and I took it. Oh yeah, we were, it's a, it's the, I know who you're talking about. She's like a famous actress. Yeah, she is. Blonde. She's a, yeah, blonde. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's, I think she's the one that played, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to say it because it might not be her, but I think it's the one that played um, the girl that can change into different things on X-Men. No, it's not her. The first one. Yes. I don't know. The it first movie it with matter. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know you're talking I about. I think that's who it was. It doesn't okay. really matter. It might not have been her, but whoever it was came out and said, "I yes, this happened. I was given and the was option, and I chose, and yeah. I chose it. I didn't know I had. And I'm famous option. because of it. And I didn't know I had another option at the time. She didn't. Mm-hmm. The reality of it is, is we know her. Well, apparently, we don't because I don't remember who this actress yeah, was. Yeah. But she's famous. She's certainly famous. Yeah. She wouldn't have been. She would have just been a beautiful woman that could have been an actress. Yes. 
Can we? It's the power that 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 those guys have. Not just those guys. There's there's a lot of women that are in those same roles that mm-hmm. do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I was shocked. I'm really honestly, this P Diddy thing is sh- is shaking me a little bit because I cannot believe the amount of male victims that there are. Mm-hmm. You'll never see a male Me Too movement. I promise you that. And I'm not yeah. going to get into this. You won't. But I don't it, agree it with blows that. Blows my mind. Like the you know Joey Lawrence. Why would you the, say that? because Terry Crews came out in the Me Too movement. Terry Crews, big Terry Crews yes. came out during the Me Too movement said this happened to me and people made fun of him. Yeah, but I think that... People made fun of him. This huge monster of a man and everyone made fun of him. Okay, but I, you I think defend that... yourself? It's I not a matter of defending it's myself. It's, maybe it's not, a different kind of power. I think it's maybe not going to come out as like the Me Too movement, but I don't necessarily agree that it's never going to come like... It might come out slowly like it has been. Like right now, maybe this is the movement because we keep hearing more about male victims in this space. It might not be as like grandiose as this is the hashtag movement and all of these women. That's it's what like, I'm saying. This there is, won't be a movement. This, There'll be I think a it, I think we're in a movement right now. Well, I, what, think, we're in a, I think we're in a state it? of exposure. People are being exposed, but I don't think you're going to see... You, you're not going to see the community rally behind... These poor boys that were taken advantage of the same way that the Me, Me Too that. movement hit. The, it, it, it should have all happened at the same time, realistically. Mm-hmm. The Me Too movement should have been like, all of us are, are victims yeah. here. But like the men were, the men saw what happened to Terry Crews and they're like, I ain't doing that. Yeah. Even so, Joey Lawrence, whoa, from Blossom, <laughs> right? His brother who was on Boy Meets World, he had an opportunity and he didn't say this. I was just listening to the podcast. So the three of them have their own podcast. And he was talking about how... Um, he was up for a role for a huge Marvel movie and he was propositioned like sleep with me and you have the the role. Wow. And he's like, this is like a revamping of my career. This would have made me. So unfortunately, chances are somebody that we know in the Marvel movies who oh. is super famous said yes to that proposition that he wow. said no to. It's so fucked up that we even live in this world still. Okay, let's move on to our really... I'm very proud of us last night. We had a really good conversation. It was Um, not an easy conversation. It was really, it was really hard. It was really confronting and it wasn't really pre-planned. I think that was our thing because usually when these conversations aren't pre-planned, we usually arrive in a defensive position or in a, um, it's very confronting, right? Yes. So confronting equals conflict. Conflict yeah, equals yeah. not not communicating effectively. I don't even know where I want to begin with this. I'll tell it. Let's just be open with it. Yeah, it's really so, personal. Like it's very personal. Yeah. Can I be as personal as it was? <laughs> I don't know. I, so last well, night I think we have to be yeah, because yeah. it only serves us. I mean, we're literally starting it only serves a us. it only <laughs> I this just, guys, this conversation is is for us, no, not for you. <laughs> I mean, it serves us to do so because we've started a brand that is all about inclusivity and expressing yourself in your sexual journey. And and we set up like straight up yesterday. We were like, we feel fraudulent because we are not perfect in that department, and we have so much that we're still working on working to on, try to. Through, yeah. it, and it's a conversation that I think people don't talk about because they feel like they're failing in a certain part of their marriage in this part sexually, because we aren't making the time to really be intimate. And the right. whole conversation is regarding intimacy in every aspect, like not just like intercourse, but like right. being intimate and connected because we, we always feel the most disconnected when we haven't been intimate with each other. Like we get really snippy at each other. And so we had this conversation yesterday and you had asked me like, you know what? I don't even know if I want to be like, Oh, here's how, here's how the conversation started. So we went, we put on a Netflix. (laughs) We we sat down on, on the, on the couch. We put on Netflix. I looked at the time. I said, this is an hour. I said, it's nine 40. This is an hour long episode. I said, Brittany, are you going to get through this whole episode? And you said, no. And I said, I know I'm not going to get through this whole episode. I said, so if we only have a certain amount of energy left, why don't we turn the TV off, go upstairs and use our energy wisely. No, I, and, and, our, I, and, and I said, and, and I said, I'll give you a massage and then we'll take the remaining balance of energy that we have and see where the night goes. Yeah. It wasn't worded like that. It but, kind of was. No, it wasn't. Because, semantics. No, but no, it's not semantics because this is where our initial fight broke out because I said to you, Hey, I'm down for that. But like, I think that, 
I think it would be nice sometimes to not necessarily because you that I said, what do you mean our energy? Because I misunderstood what you were hey, saying. You said, what do you mean? Because, and I'm like, hold what on. do you mean what I mean? But You're here's like, what do you thing. mean about that? Here- and so I said exactly what I meant. I said, I mean, afterwards we can have sex. I understand. But when you had originally said it, we were watching a show that was kind of weird and it was a little bit dark. And you said, and we can change this energy and put this energy. Anyways, I misinterpreted what you were saying. So I said to you, what do you mean by that? Because I wanted you to clarify what you meant. I thought you were talking about like dark energy. What I didn't realize is that you were saying, hey, let's probably have sex later, okay, which is fine. And I had just said, hey, Ryan, I'm down for that. But I'd also like to have like a mini conversation about having, and again, I said both of us, you got super defensive here. I think that we need to do, we could do a better job at, allowing things to progress naturally and having that like romance in intimacy without saying, Hey, do you want to go upstairs and have sex? And I said, I am definitely like guilty of doing this a lot because if we're, if the kid, if the kids are occupied, I'll text you, but you don't have a quickie, whatever it is, that is okay. And that can happen occasionally. And we both do that, but sometimes it's also nice to have it just happen organically. So then I was upset because I was trying to make it organic. You made me explain it. I explained it. And then I got in trouble for explaining it because the spontaneity was gone. Yeah. And you didn't get in trouble. I was just saying I would, I think I would really like and appreciate if it wasn't so mechanical sometimes. And like, I get it. And we've talked to so many experts about this and they're like, pencil it in, pencil it in. Fine. Fair. Sometimes I don't want to pencil it in. Sometimes I don't want to be like, hey, do you want to come upstairs? And like, I don't want to do that. I just want it to organically happen. And then we started talking about why it wasn't and what we could do to help do that. And at the at the end of our conversation, it we've kind of just come to terms with the fact that so many things. A, we are in such an interesting relationship because we are constantly working together and we are constantly together in literally every avenue of our life. When we were away for your birthday on the weekend, we noticed like all of our friends left work at home right? We couldn't, like we had so much going on in all aspects of our life that like all we had is work. So when when you come home and say you're out of, like you work out of the office, you come home, right? You can unload to your partner and like, this is what happened for me today. And your partner can be that space for you to like have that conversation with, connect with, like talk to. It's, I just fucking talked to you like 30 seconds before. How was your day? Ah, you were there. You were there. (laughs) <laughs> right. So it it becomes a lot and it's hard for us. Um, it was hard for me, sorry, to really compartmentalize those hats. And I said, you know, you do a really good job of of taking that hat off and being, you know, I, now I'm putting my intimacy hat on. Yeah, and I, I want to focus on pleasure. When I have a pleasure. boner, my brain stops working. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to com- compartmentalize anything. It's just like, oh. And, um. and honestly, I will say. I know this is blanketed, but most women aren't like that. I'm constantly wearing all of my hats, all of them. Like I can't take them off. So like when you say like, well, I don't like you're not in the mood. It's not that I'm not in the mood, but I have so much happening over here still in our day that it's hard for me to be like, hey, I know that we have this huge issue going on in one of our businesses. And so I'm really stressed out about that. Maybe I'm frustrated with something you did. Maybe I did something. I can't be like, beep, 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 let's place this over here. And now I'm sexy time. Like it doesn't work like that for me. And I think that we decided at the end of everything that we need to prioritize intimacy. And so we've had this conversation multiple times, but we didn't really have actionable steps that we could take to really try to make sure that this works. So we decided to take however many days, maybe it's two to three days a week. And on the Sunday night, we basically plan out our week. We are in a very strange space with work where our our schedule constantly changes. Like literally at the beginning of the week, it could look like one thing. And at the end of the week, it's like something totally different. So Sunday night, we said, we're going to meal prep because we're going to be on a healthy era journey. We're going to meal prep together. And then we're going to take a look at our week and we're going to say, okay, you know what? Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, this week are potential for us to actually focus on intimacy. It's a feasible opportunity yes. for intimacy. And when we say intimacy, it's not like we're going we're gonna to have sex. It absolutely might lead to that. We're going to But intimacy it. in the sense is like we put the kids to bed and we fucking turn our phones off. And our phones stay upstairs. Goodbye. We don't even have them downstairs. We have them on loud in case someone calls us and it's an emergency. Fine. 
but we are intentional with our time. And maybe that looks like playing a card game. Maybe that looks like maybe one day we want to just watch a show and cuddle. Maybe it looks like we're laying in bed and I'm reading a book, you're reading a book, and we're just like together and we're intimate and we're doing something together that doesn't involve our fucking phones. Mm -hmm. Because that is when the organic shit can happen. That's when you're just close, right? And you made some suggestions, which we had to tweak. And it was just such a good conversation because it really allowed us to make a plan for this to be successful. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and the key is, uh, I'll say this because we did this with the kids the other day. The kids were fighting because they're sleeping in the same room. Riley, Riley had struggles with bedtime. And so she wants someone in the same room with her. And Cooper really loves sleeping beside Riley. Uh, well, the other day they had a fight and Cooper was on the one side and Riley was on the other side and they wanted to switch sides and they, they could not figure out who wanted like what side to sleep on. And so we intervene and we say, okay, well then you're not sleeping together. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, okay, you guys, never mind. You guys can sleep together. You got five minutes to figure this out. And in five minutes, if you guys cannot figure a solution out, then you're not sleeping together. And then I came in and I said, guys, let's ask this question do you want to sleep with each other? Mm -hmm. And Cooper's like, yeah, I want to sleep with Riley. And Riley, do you want to sleep with Cooper? Yes, I want to sleep with Cooper. Okay, so you guys both want the same thing. The outcome is Let's the focus same. on the same thing, which is the outcome, and then figure it out. But if you guys can't figure this thing out, the outcome is you don't sleep together. So you need to recognize and realize that you guys are impacting the outcome that you both want. And so when we were having this argument last night, I said some really deep things to you mm -hmm. and really hard things for me, emasculating things for me. It was very difficult for me to have the conversation with you last night. And usually that goes to make wrongs and moralities and you feel attacked or you, or you feel hurt by what I said and it's confronting for you. And so naturally what we do is we push back. And, and so that's where the conversation was going. We could see where the conversation was going. We've had this conversation so many times. It was like, and here's where we stopped talking to each other for two days, mm -hmm. right? And that's when we took the one, and this is why I'm saying this. This is like a, this is like a shout out to you guys. Sometimes it's really good to take a step back because I know you like to leave conversations, but before you leave the conversation is to take a step back and check in. What's the intention behind this conversation? What would you like out of this conversation? What would I like out of this conversation? And what we both realize is that we both wanted more connection and intimacy. Yeah, you asked, you said, what does... Like, what is sex for you? And I said, honestly, like sex is connection. And I think at the core of this conversation, I feel disconnected to you. Even though we are together like 23 hours of the day, I feel disconnected because we are connected mechanically. Operationally. Operationally in our t daily tasks, being a parent, running the businesses together. But like at a deeper core level, I felt the connection was missing. And so for me, that's crucial. Like if I don't have that connection and I don't have intimacy, then I don't, then I'm not in the mood. And that's where we were at a, a, um, a crossroads because you don't like necessarily need that. It comes when you have the act and then you feel the connection where I need that before it happens. Yeah. And that's also not true. Um, and that's what <laughs> that's, it's not true. <laughs> It's and th and this, uh, ladies, when you're talking to your husband, I'm not and saying you're listening you don't like this, connection. That's yes, not what I said. Yes, we like sex. Yes, and I'm not saying not all men do, but a lot of us do. And if you look at if you look at TV shows and sitcoms and all of these things, what's the ongoing running joke? The husband doesn't want uh, want the husband wants to have sex. The wife doesn't want to have sex. It's a it's an ongoing joke in society because it's the it's a normal situation. But I think the biggest misconception that women have is intimacy isn't sex for men. Intimacy is intimacy. How we get intimacy often is sex. We talked about it last night. I said, you know, sometimes, Brittany, when you want to get in the mood or we want to get in the mood, I'll give you a massage. I'll rub you down for a half an hour and then you're in the mood and then we have sex. I would like to get a massage for a half an hour. Mm -hmm. I would love a hand massage, a head massage, a back rub. I would love it. The only actual act of intimacy that I get is penetration. Mm -hmm. That's not, that doesn't mean that <laughs> I get to penetrate you, to be clear. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with pegging, just to be very clear. I'm just not into the pegging. Um, it's not my thing yet. Maybe, maybe later. <laughs> Who knows? I don't, I just don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but, anyways, all I'm saying is, 
the only act of physical intimacy that most men get is sex because yeah. their partners believe that that's the outcome that they want. But that's not necessarily true. Ask your husband how much he would like a massage. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you a head massage, scalp massage, rubbing their back is the same level of intimacy that they're seeking from you is sex. Mm -hmm. I you think that, just think all we want is sex. No, it's not but, true. But I said this to you and yesterday. And I do want <laughs> sex. You were, to be clear, I, massages are great too. You were you were confronted with this because I said, you know, when like when you say like oh you I want you want me to give you a massage. It's code for like do you want to have sex? And I said sometimes that's a pressure that I don't want to have. And we have this conversation about intimacy and the more intimate we are in in all aspects not just like intercourse like when we're intimate and we're just like close proximity and we're together we're cuddling whatever we're doing the more intimate we are when you say like can i give you a massage that's necessary that's not always going to hold this power of being like and then it's going to lead to sex because there is a pressure there and then you're like will you feel pressured to have sex with me no that's not what i was saying it was like the pressure of sex almost takes the romanticism out of like the act of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that pressure. I'm like, I would rather you not say that. Like, can I give you a massage? Cause then I'm like, well then it, maybe I'm like not in the mood to have sex. Maybe I can't take all my hats off right now. And now I know that he wants to have sex cause he wants to give me a massage, but it's not actually a massage, right? It's not just a massage. It is. It's a half an hour massage. Trust me. My thumbs Yes. Know that it massage. Yeah, yes, you. that turn into mas massaging. I've got to work for the, 30 minutes uh, to have sex with my wife. I'm kidding. What we're saying is, and this is what's important for this is the important takeaway. What we recognized was because we do not prioritize connection and intimacy, when we have connection and intimacy, it equals sex. Right. So when I'm seeking connection and intimacy, you're thinking I'm seeking sex and you're either in the mood or not in the mood. Mm -hmm. And what we talked about was it's okay for you to send me a text message and say, hey, let's have sex and I'm in. Yes. It's okay for you to say, hey, let's have a quickie and I'm in. All of these things are okay for you to do for me. But when I do them for you and you're not in the mood, it's a no. And that's what was confronting for me. Okay. That's what I was having a problem with. Because you're like, I just want romance. No, I want, you're I want totally this, I want just that. talking no, no. shit right now. I literally just said, I said multiple times that it's okay for both of us, for both of us. So don't squash over I'm that. I'm saying this is this No, is but you are repeating it that incorrectly. The reason I'm repeating it is because there are people who are listening to this have these conversations on an ongoing basis. Okay, but at the end of the day, you were trying to sum up what we were talking about. It's okay to have those straight blunt conversations and it's okay to do other things right. it doesn't have to be all one-sided and to try to incorporate both for both parties is what we need to do better at right and intimacy is not penetration penetration is sex mm -hmm. sex and intimacy are not the same things you can be intimate while having sex but intimacy and sex are not the same things and what we're what we're realizing is if we carve out time throughout the week and be very intentional around intimacy. It may or may not lead to more sex, but it most certainly will lead to a deeper connection. Yeah. And what we actually are seeking in our relationship is a deeper connection. Mm -hmm. And so the big takeaway for me was these conversations suck. They're not easy. And they're not easy because what's ultimately happening is both parties are not fulfilled in the relationship. And that's not easy to deal with. It's yeah. not easy to be with. And if I'm sharing with you that I'm not fulfilled in a category, how do you not make it about you? Yeah. And then when you're not fulfilled in a category, because ultimately you're not fulfilled in a category or we would be more intimate. So there's something over here that's not working. Now I'm triggered by that. And when two people are triggered by communication and a lack of whatever that is, to not take it personally is very difficult to do. So then to assume or to be what's predictable is that you're not going to communicate effectively. So our takeaway is when you find yourself in these conversations and you're ultimately going to find yourself in these conversations, as soon as it gets elevated to a point where you guys feelings are starting to get hurt and the tonality of your, of your speaking changes, take a step back and say, well, what are we trying to accomplish here? Mm -hmm. What we're trying to accomplish is X and then start to build from X. 
it's so easy, especially when these conversations aren't planned. They come up like and that we popped talked up. for like an hour and a half, like almost two hours. Like it was a long time and it was progression and there was highs and lows. Like I don't somebody just messaged me this morning and said, I listened to your podcast last week and I was really confronted because a lot of the times like I we, last, last week we were talking about how there's an idea and then there's no execution and there's no plan. And she's like, I often resent my husband because I feel the I feel very similar. Like I have all of these great ideas. I want to execute them. And then he is just like, yeah, figure it out. And like, how do you guys deal with that without like the resentment there if one person is not getting that help? And it comes back to this, like, it's not easy. It's not a one time five minute conversation. That conversation that we had was so confronting yesterday. There was ups and downs. But at the core of it, we like you said, we took a step back even just for a moment to say, okay, if if I'm removing myself and my emotions from this, like, is it something that we can fix and bring together? Do I want to fix it and bring it together? Or do I just want to be mad? Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a while. It's going to take multiple conversations. So don't think it's going to happen overnight. Like it really has taken a very long time for us to get there. So just to give you guys hope, because I know a lot of people are messaging me. They're like, you guys have such great communication. Sometimes we fucking don't. Like, yeah. (laughs) Here's a tool that I, that I use in business a lot and I use it in our relationship a lot. It's been, it's been a very effective tool. And I would suggest or invite you guys to use this when come when conversations aren't going the way you want them. Sometimes if you just look at your partner and you're saying a perfect world, in a perfect world, utopia, what would you like me to say right now? And then I say what I would like you to say. And we see how far of a gap that is. Because if you said to me, Ryan, all I wish that you would say is let's do date night. I'd be like, that's all you want me to say? Mm, just kind of lay it all out. Just lay it out there. Tell mm-hmm. me what you want me to say. I might not agree with it, but in a perfect world... Where does this conversation go for you? Mm -hmm. What's the perfect outcome from this conversation? And also like say it because as soon as you said that, I can see that it could potentially be taken as like in a perfect world. Like, what do you want from me? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you want from me? Yeah. What do you want from me? That's what I thought. But it's also, it's not being sarcastic. It's being like, it's being like truly like I'm genuinely asking. I'm not being a sarcastic dick. Like I'm not getting to what you want right, me to say. So, I can see that my communication right. is not landing the way you want it to. How far removed is my communication from your ideal communication? Would you like to fuck is the question, right? And when I when you get that, you see how big of the gap is. But more importantly, what you he, what you're now getting is what's really at the core of what your partner's fighting for. Yeah. They're not fighting you. They're fighting for something. Mm-hmm. And when you can realize and recognize that your partner is, is in battle right now for their emotions, their feelings, their wants, their desires, are we not here to to be that person for our partner? Mm-hmm. But when we don't know it and we're fighting and we're dealing with our own stuff as well, we're, we're fighting two different battles. But if you just break it up for one millisecond and just stop and ask... You might actually be fighting the same battle. And last night we were fighting the exact same battle. Mm-hmm. We were just coming at it from two different we were just perspectives. Using different weapons. Yeah, mm-hmm. we were. I was bringing the weapons of mass destruction and and masculinity, and you were bringing the fuck you energy. And it didn't work. But then it worked. I was so proud of us last night, Brittany. Even when we went to bed and we were brushing our teeth, I said, you know what? This conversation could have been really bad. And it usually is really bad. And it wasn't really bad. I'm going to go to bed and masturbate. Um, <laughs> and, but before I do, I just want you to know that I'm going to masturbate if powerfully to now. You. This isn't a disempowered masturbation. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. Empowered. On that note, have a great rest of your day. Peace out. A-Town. Boop, boop, boop. Masturbate. <laughs> I'm a side for my soul.